the Kimber Micro 9. Let's check it out. Kimber makes really fine quality firearms um, and they're really known for their 1911s. Uh, here in the past few years they have produced their Solo which was a 9mm striker fire pistol and then the Micro 9. Uh, this is a miniaturized 1911, super fine quality. But one of the things that's interesting about Kimber is it actually was started in 1979 by an Australian, uh, Jack Warren who moved here and began to produce 22 rifles and then just continued to upgrade the line from hunting rifles and then of course the 1911s and so on. Uh, one interesting fact about Jack Warren is that he sold the company and then started Warren Scope Mounts which are just excellent mounts. I use them all the time especially their quick detach rings. Uh, Les Elderman is now the owner of Kimber and uh, still producing really high quality firearms. And it wasn't until recently that I owned a Kimber. Uh, you know, I've always admired their 1911s. Uh, they're very fine quality. But I wanted one of the Solos. And so I picked up a Solo a few months ago. And guys, I loved it. And from there, I was inspired by the Kimber Micro 9. Now, GunBuyer.com sent the Micro 9 for this test and evaluation. It is an incredible source if you're looking for firearms, and plus, they're just great to deal with, so check them out. The Kimber Micro 9, uh, really just a mini 1911. Uh, and it's funny because, you know, a lot of 1911s now are available in 9mm. But this is just a scaled-down version uh, with the same grip angle, uh, the same features, but yet without the grip safety and it is an aluminum alloy frame. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and drop our magazine. It's a seven round magazine. Uh, you can get a six round without this base pad. So it's flush with the grip and the gun is unloaded. And one of the things about Kimber is it has a high reputation for quality. Uh, the tolerances, the fit, the finish, um, you know, is undisputable. I mean, they really do a great job with their firearms and the price reflects it typically especially with their 1911 line uh, and some of the other designs but one of the things about tight tolerances traditionally with the 1911 is that it can cause reliability issues and so there is a a lot of people out there that have experienced problems with Kimber but there are also a lot of guys out there that love Kimber firearms so I decided to experience myself now one of the things that Kimber does is a stainless steel slide uh, on their Micro 9 series, but also with an aluminum frame. And I really like metal. And one of the reasons why is because the precision uh, is just there. Uh, the fit is better. Uh, now, I'm a big polymer striker fire guy, and that's what I typically you know count on for self-defense. But there is nothing to me better than taking out a 1911, uh, whether it's the Micro or a full size going out to the range. It's just the right feel, it's thin, and the trigger is excellent typically, and so it's just a nice gun to shoot. Now, one of the things I like about this size pistol is it's so thin, it makes it really easy to carry in more discreet situations for concealed carry. But yet, you know, it is a single stack, so I'm only getting seven rounds. But there are times where I just like to have that smaller size. Now, it does offer a three inch barrel. In fact, it's 3.1 inches. Uh, the magazine release is your standard 1911 here on the side. It is not reversible. Also, we have the standard frame-mounted safety that is 1911, and it is positive. 
But one of the things about a, this safety is that it is definitely one-sided. Uh, there are a number of different models of the Micro 9. Uh, Two-tone, there's different Cerakote finishes, there's the, the black version. I mean, you name it. It seems like that Kimber, and that's one thing Kimber does. They put out a lot of models of the 1911 design. Uh, and then, of course, different type grips. Now, I love these rosewood grips. They're just beautiful. The Kimber logo is laser etched into the grip. And then, of course, you have your texturing, smooth sides on the back. And these are hex head screws, so they're easier to take on and off. Uh, I do like the beaver tail. This really keeps from any kind of hammer bite or slide bite. It just kind of brings it up close. And it gets a fairly low bore axis, which, you know, guys, I love. The magazine base plate, I really like. Again, it does have the flush fit, but this gives you a full grip on the pistol. I'll tell you guys, this gun, I mean, it just nestles in your hand, even though it is a real small handgun. And when firing it, the recoil is fairly snappy. But there's something about having this grip that you can control the muzzle flip. Uh, to me, honestly, and I was really surprised because I thought it would be a little bit excessive, but I really enjoyed uh, the recoil pulse on this handgun. And maybe that's because I've shot 1911s for the past 30 years. <laughs> and so, you know, it's just almost like coming home. And that's just for me. That's my experience. One of the things I do like are the sights. Now, they are, they're they're not the real low-profile sights like a lot of concealed carry pistols have. Uh, in fact, the white dots, the three-dot sight, is really pronounced. I mean, it's a fairly large dot. So you're going to be able to pick up that front sight very easily. Now, they do offer the night sights, and again, there's just a lot of different variations. Plus, the sights are steel. I like that, and they are dovetailed in, and of course, there are other options out there for sight replacement. Again, if you want to go with night sights, or whatever is your preference, but honestly, from the factory, I do like these sights. Uh, the hammer is spurred, and so it gives you, you know, ease to bring this hammer back, and with a single action, it's important to be able to get that hammer back. The slide serrations are good and strong, makes it really easy. In fact, really, for you know, female shooters or the elderly or people that really have weaker hand strength, uh, this is not a bad slide pull. You know, some guns can have more of an excessive slide pull. The mainspring housing is checkered and uh, it is a separate color. This is aluminum. So you have some checkering here, but they don't put checkering on the front strap. I think I would really like to have that. I think some of the models do have it. Uh, but, of course, these go up in price with different features that they have. Uh, and then with just the plain stainless, and it's kind of a brushed finish, um, it's very clean looking. And I, that's one of the things I really liked about it. With the hammer back and the slide engaged, you can still rack the slide. So if I want to do a press check, even with it loaded, cocked, and locked, I can do my press check. One thing I did notice is that when you drop the hammer and you have the safety engaged, it doesn't come back. So, just something to note. The ejection port has been lowered and flared, uh, and that just allows for better feeding, especially with hollow point ammunition. One thing that Kimber states is you really need to shoot premium loads in your Micro 9. Uh, I know with the Solo, it can be very finicky. Now, I did a test on the Solo, and it shot everything that I put through it. And we shot a variety of different type ammo in this pistol. One of the things that we had right at first was when my daughter was shooting at Saramac, uh, she started having some problems uh, with it jamming right up front, first time she shot it. And I watched her and she was actually limp wristing it. And so every time I would pick it up, I never had any kind of failures. I mean, none. I just did not have them. And I've seen uh, on the forums and, um, you know, in some of the comments that people have had issues with reliability. But as far as what we tested, once she really got a firm grip on the handgun, she didn't have any other issues. So I think with an inexperienced shooter, you need to be careful with this pistol to make sure you have a good firm grip on it. But to be honest, 9mm in this smaller size, you'll want to have a good firm grip. The barrel is actually 3.15 inches in length. Uh, it is a machine piece of stainless steel and um, it just held up well. The accuracy really was exceptional. But the muzzle is crowned, so that's going to actually help protect 
that muzzle in case you, it gets dinged. And that can be an issue with accuracy if you're not careful. It also features a beveled magwell, which makes it nice to be able to get those magazines in and out. We didn't have any problems with magazines. But one thing we did have an issue with is with this base plate kind of sticking out. If you have a grip on here, it can interfere and pinch your hand. Uh, and that, I did experience some of that. But it does have that kind of bobtail feel to it with the base pad. And so you're able to get a really nice grip to it. I think, honestly, uh, I would probably, if, if I'm going to carry this for a self-defense pistol, I'd probably want to get rid of this lip. Just have a base pad that fit the bottom of the magazine. Uh, it's going to give a little bit of a gap here, but I think it would be better as far as reloading, especially in a self-defense situation. And then if you have just the flush fit mag, you're not going to have that problem. But regardless of all else, this handgun is just very finely crafted, which is Kimber's you know, signature. I mean, they do a really excellent job uh, with their firearm production. The tolerances are very tight, and so obviously that can lead to problems with some guns. Uh, but this one just ran like a top. Now let's go ahead and check trigger pull action. We're going to pull out our magazine and double check the gun to make sure it's unloaded. 1911s have typically a good trigger. I mean, they're short, the reset's quick, so we're going to go ahead and test this one. It is an aluminum trigger. I think the SIG has a plastic trigger, uh, so you're going to get a better trigger. But you can see that it's more of the pivot style than one that on the standard 1911 you bring back with the bars. So we have a little bit of take up. There's a nice place where it's at the wall, and then a really crisp break. Reset right there so super quick reset back on it uh, this is an excellent trigger we're going to check trigger pull with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells now Kimber states that it's a seven pound trigger pull 5 pounds 8.8 .8 ounces 5 pounds 4.9 ounces 5 pounds 2.7 ounces so uh, not anywhere near the seven pound mark and honestly it feels like it's less now one thing that I don't like about the pistol is it only comes with one magazine one seven round magazine um, and so you know especially when you go into the range and honestly you need a backup one or two at the least uh, so I got in touch with gun mag warehouse they were kind enough to send me <laughs> a couple of extra mags uh, which makes it really nice. Gun Mag Warehouse, if I need anything for magazines, they are more than happy to send them, and uh, it's a great resource. The magazines run $27.99 for the seven rounders, but then they also offer the six rounders for $25.99. I want to thank Fiocchi uh, for sponsoring the ammo. We're also shooting some Arms Corps 124 grain. I know they feed really well in the solo, some freedom munitions, extreme defensive. And we have some other variable hollow point ammunition we're just going to try out. Now again, we did take the Kimber Micro 9 to the range three different occasions. Uh, first time I wanted just to get a feel for it and as we've shown we did have a few issues right up front and it was really attributed to my daughter limp wristing <laughs> you know she wasn't really used to shooting this small nine millimeter uh, but after getting a good firm grip we didn't have any other issues now when we took it again twice more we had no malfunctions at all uh, it just shot really well and my son Seth definitely was you know putting it through its paces and uh, really enjoyed shooting it. One of the things you'll notice when firing it, of course, it's a small pistol in nine millimeter. So you're gonna get some muzzle rise. I mean, it is a little bit snappy, but there's something about the grip angle and the way that this thing fits in your hand that it is actually a pleasure to shoot. I honestly enjoyed shooting this handgun. There are some small handguns that I get that after about 100 rounds, I'm done. <laughs> With the Micro 9, we just continued to shoot it. I really had planned to shoot about 300 rounds through the pistol and ended up shooting 500. Um, now, one of the things about the accuracy is that it's spot on. And typically, 1911s can be very accurate, especially when they have really tight tolerances. 
And so that's what we found. One of the things about the sights, uh, the three dot sights, they really showed up well. They're a little bit larger and able to grab those sights really easily. I mean, this is considered a concealed carry piece mainly, uh, but it does give you the feel of a full size gun in your hand. I mean, it just really feels into your hand. Uh, so total pleasure shooting it. Uh, there have been some issues with some people and you know guys you know that's just the way it is with different gun companies but as far as my experience with the kimber micro 9 it was stellar now for disassembly we're going to drop our magazine make sure the gun is unloaded plus it brings the hammer in the rear position you notice right here is your slide stop notch and then behind it's a little crescent we want to get the little notch that's in your slide stop to line up with this crescent so we're going to have to grab it and pull the slide back and if you look through here, you can see the little corresponding crescent that's in your slide release or slide stop. Now, I've taken a punch. The first time I did this, it was a little difficult. It's very tight. So I want to get it out to where it just kind of pops out and then it'll pull right out. Now take the slide and just go forward. Again, you don't have to pull the trigger, which makes it nice. Uh, you have your full length guide rod and spring. I want you to note though that this is a flat recoil spring these really aid in <laughs> recoil mitigation. Uh, and I've seen this with a number of different ones. And then we have our barrel. We're going to pull it out. I have put 500 rounds through this handgun. Uh, and you can tell, by the way, that the barrel, you know, it's just stainless. And so it does have some wear on it. But I took it three different times to the range. Uh, you have a nice, polished, very extended uh, feed ramp. And, of course, you have your uh, crown on your muzzle. Here you can see you're similar to the 1911 style and then with the frame same thing. One thing about the 1911 it's fairly simple but yet it's still old school so <laughs> there are some considerations. Now this is all you need to do to field strip. Let's go ahead and put in our barrel. Uh, one thing about the recoil spring is it will bind as you're placing it um, and so just be careful and hold on to it because that thing will shoot across the room get it right behind the barrel lug just like this then take your slide and put it on your frame right here this little lever you want to push it down as the slide comes over now bring back your slide and when you see the barrel hole come through go ahead and in, enter your slide stop but don't put it all the way down the frame and then bring your crescent right here now you'll notice this little spring this spring actually fits under the slide stop, but it'll naturally go into that position. And that's one of the things about the Solo that it, you had to really be careful of because it wouldn't always go into position and it would cause malfunctions. But this seems to go in just right. One way you can check is to get up here where your slide stop is and if there is spring tension, you're set. But I haven't had any problems with it not being set, so just FYI. And so here we go. Function check, and we're ready to go. The great thing is it doesn't have the barrel bushing and all the other stuff that goes along with your standard 1911. Now the Micro 9 comes in a cardboard box, uh, and that's fine with me because I don't use typically my hard case plastic boxes. Uh, and then you get a gun rug, which I really like that. And so it has a little place for an extra magazine. It did come with a chamber flag. Um, this is a nice little pistol rug. And of course you have a sticker, your standard information, uh, owner's manual, a bunch of other things, and you get your wonderful lock. And they included a little bit of shooter's choice lubricant. Now Kimbers are very finely made, and so that comes with a price. The MSRP is $654. Uh, on the Gun Buyer website, I found it for $539. And so Gun Buyer is an excellent source for firearms and I highly recommend them and I thank them for sending this pistol for the test and evaluation. Those guys are just awesome to deal with. I do want to talk about a few pros and cons. One of the big things is the 1911 grip angle in the feel. Uh, it's very shootable. The trigger's excellent. I mean just very crisp, very clean. The accuracy, top notch, fit and finish uh, is a Kimber. I mean you know there's no argument about the fit and finish. Reliability was fine, was excellent, as long as you had a decent grip on the handgun. As far as cons go, one magazine. Uh, you know, I really would like to see two magazines with a pistol. I think that's just, you know, 
the minimum. But you get what you get. And of course, I want to thank Gun Mag Warehouse uh, for sending those extra magazines for the test. Uh, and then the other thing is this little lip in which we mentioned, but the lip did pinch and I don't like that. Uh, I think some uh, front serrations on the front strap here on the grip would be a nice addition. There are again some models that have that. Uh, you know, if you're a lefty, you're going to have some issues. Of course, the safety's on one side. There may be some models with ambidextrous safeties, but the magazine release is pretty much dedicated to one side because it's the 1911 frame. Uh, it is single action, so you know that is one thing. If you're used to carrying striker fire pistols, it makes a little bit of a different manual of arms that you need to train with. Uh, but overall, the shooting on this pistol was excellent. I love the feel of it, and um, this is definitely going to be a keeper. So again, I want to thank GunBuyer.com for sending the Kimber Micro 9 for this test and evaluation. Uh, guys, I'll tell you what, if you're looking for firearms, check out GunBuyer.com. They are just excellent to deal with, and it's really nice to be able to get different handguns to bring to you guys. Now guys, this video was brought to you in part by BattleBox. And if you've been on my Sensible Prepper channel, and I've said this a number of times, BattleBox is to me the best subscription service for tactical and shooting and you know prepping type gear, survival gear. They have some of the best quality items of any subscription box that I've seen. Uh, they have four different tiers, and the top tier, which is the Pro Plus Knife of the Month Club, typically the knife is as much as the box altogether with all the items, and that is at a good price. So, Battle Box, check them out. Uh, you get a 10% discount with the first subscription service using Such in the coupon code. And I'll have my latest Battle Box opening right here annotated. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Bring in your barrel first. Okay. Now this is all. This is. Where's my solo? No solo mio. Ha, ha, ha.